everybody coming into the closet. Before we get going on the first segment, I just kind of have to throw out this little warning that there's going to be profanity in this segment. Uh, some strong language, some vulgar things are going to be used. So get the kids out of the room. Or call the kids into the room, depending on your parenting style. I'm not here to judge. But whatever you do, do it quickly because we're going to be starting pretty fast this time. Like, now. Fuck! Okay. So, a couple of months ago, I was looking around on the internet and I came across this poster for the first Star Trek film that came out in 1979. And I giggled. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I giggled a little bit. I may have squeezed just just a tad because that's that's pretty funny. Like, I wouldn't even put Kirk and Spock in a rainbow as a joke. And here it is, an official movie poster. Like, that's, that's just wonderful. So I saved it to my hard drive because that's a wonderful coincidence. And I moved on, and then a couple of weeks later, I came across this poster for the fourth Star Trek movie, The Voyage Home, which came out in 1986. And now I'm thinking, really guys? Really? Did you like, did you commission Elton John to make that poster for you? Like, let's go over the gay checklist really quick, shall we? Two men, check. San Francisco, check. Rainbow, check. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that's the three pillars of gay right there, and this poster kind of hits on all of them. And throwing the Klingon warbird in the middle of everything really doesn't help to butch up this poster all that much. But when you look at it and you see the pretty colors streaming out the back of it, it really gives you the indication that it's playing for Team Homo more than anything else. I mean, look at it. Pretty colors dreaming out the back of it. I mean, it, that gaze up, the only thing on that poster that wouldn't otherwise scream sensitive lifetime special. Now, despite this, I still thought it was a coincidence that made it even funnier, but a coincidence nonetheless. So, save it to the hard drive, like I always do, for future reference. And then... A couple of weeks later, not kidding, I came across this other poster for The Voyage Home. What the butt sex? Are you kidding me? Like, really? Really? You take the rainbow from the first poster and the San Francisco from the second poster to create a poster offspring more flamboyant than Liberace in his glory days? And I'm supposed to think that this is, like, an innocent happenstance? Like, seriously? Look at it! They're getting beamed down by a goddamn rainbow! I've seen gay porn that wasn't this queer. I know, it was this one. It was the third poster that, that made me do a little research because now it was just getting a little ridiculous. So I looked it up, and the rainbow first appeared as a gay symbol in 1978 at a gay pride parade in San Francisco. And San Francisco has pretty much always been associated with gays, but it especially came around in World War I because that's when they went on this avid hunt for gays in the military and they kicked like 9,000 people out and most of them were booted to San Francisco. So the city thing and the rainbow thing both were established before the first movie even came out. No sense. The first movie came out in 1979, and the rainbow didn't first appear as a gay symbol until 1978. There's only a year difference, so the odds of that being a coincidence is a little bit higher. But the Voyage Home doesn't really have an excuse. No excuse whatsoever. And those posters out-gay the other poster by like a million Clay Aikens. But still, I can't seem to come down on either side of this. I really can't. 
Because when I think about it, I can't imagine that they did this on purpose because of Kirk and Spock. I just, first of all, that's too good to be true. Second of all, that would just be the craziest fucking thing that they could possibly do. That would just be so, I mean, they had, they had cojones. Don't get me wrong, they had massive, massive cojones, but that would just be ridiculous, unless they were laughing at us. Unless they were sitting around, like, drinking and going, you know, after all this shit we've done, I don't think we could even set the fourth movie in San Francisco and put rainbows in it and everything. I don't think they'd get it even after that. That's the only way I can see that that, that would happen. So I, I really can't, I just can't imagine that they sat down and said, okay, we're going to do this. But on the other hand, I look at those posters, and I just can't help but know that this could not have been an accident. This could not have been just an innocent coincidence, because it's just too blatant. And these posters don't just pop up out of nowhere. It wasn't like, hey, Bill, come up with a Star Trek poster. Okay, gayness, put it in a movie theater. That's not how it happens. They have to be conceived. They have to be designed. They have to be approved. They go through people. It doesn't just pop up, and I really have a hard time believing that something with two men, rainbows, and San Francisco passed through more than one person, and nobody caught on that it might seem a little gay. I can't, I just can't even process that. Like, I cannot believe that at all. And when was, when was San Francisco established as Starfleet headquarters anyway? Whose idea was that? I'm actually honestly asking this because I can't really find a for sure, a for sure huh, if I can speak, answer. So I'm, I'm really asking. I want to say, I really want to say that it wasn't established until the voyage home, but I'm asking. When was San Francisco established as Starfleet headquarters? So yeah, I really can't, I really can't come down on either side of this. But I wanted to talk about it anyway, because one, it's fucking funny as hell, and second, you guys can talk about it now. And you can kind of just decide for yourself. Because me, I've got no clue. None at all. But, goddamn.